Hello and welcome to Script Tonight React. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season one, episode seven of The Expanse. The episode is called Windmills. Heck of a last episode, one of my absolute favourites of the season so far. Big questions I was left with. What is on the chip that Yao gave to Lopez, which now Fred Johnson has picked up? What are Fred Johnson's intentions? Is this a rescue mission or is this a suicide mission in which Fred can get rid of potentially Julie Mao or whoever this witness is and all of the other witnesses, which are the people on the Rosinante? Of course, either way, whether Fred Johnson is doing like a quote unquote good thing or a bad thing, Avasarala is watching. So there is a link. It, it, I feel relieved that what's happening now with the Rosinante crew isn't happening in a kind of vacuum because I don't, I think at this point, I trust Avasarala more than I trust Fred Johnson, but that's because I've seen Fred Johnson blow up a group of innocent civilians. And the worst thing I've seen Avasarala do is engage in torture on no PA suspect both awful just in the sense of sheer size so both of them can clearly do some shady stuff but in terms of who's demonstrated themselves kind of most awful at this point it would be fred johnson that says nothing about what they could do in the future how is mars going to take the explosion of yet another one of their ships and what is now i mean this is an act of terrorism there are no doubt going to be repercussions that hit the belters what are those going to look like and what is the impact going to be i'm presuming it's going to be a lot more support for the opa who already seem to have overwhelming support on series because now with their additional resources we know that they've also taken over star helix which is virtually the only system of any kind of law enforcement on series even though there aren't laws and there is still a number of mysteries around characters and their motivations that i'm really looking forward to getting more information on so without further ado let's have at it Whee! and um she deserved to be helped not everybody does, you know? Sorry. Station stop, mid down stretch. He looks very, very drunk. Did he just drunk dial Jules Pierre? Take me to the tracks! Mars went ballistic when a belter attacked the Scipio Africanus. So now they're patrolling every shipping lane between here and Eris. Yeah. And we are driving a stolen Martian frigate. <laughs> But the only way this ship will pass for a freighter is if no one looks close enough. I'm tired of rolling the dice. This whole trip is a gamble. Just got pinged by a ranging laser. They're just giving us a little love tap. Let us know they're watching. A little love tap. Well, if that love tap turns into a target lock, we need to be ready. Right. Hey, y'all. Why are we broadcasting? What are you talking about? No one's broadcasting anything. Yeah, we are. He's right. It's a radio transmission coming from between the holes. There's nothing down there but service and conduit. Could be a faulty controller. No. Oh, it's not. Amos, check it out. Amos! Amos. I'm on it. Why did he pause? What was that about? What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh shit, we're not gonna get into it. Oh shit! Was that the spy? Somebody were in the handmaid's town. Exactly if I see I one person on the ground or one helicopter overhead, You'll be living on basic assistance by the end of the month. Yes, ma'am. He's her again. I guess gotta stop. 
I love this actress. She was Rose Dewitt Bucato's mum in Titanic. I'm Ellis Holden. I'm Christian of a sort of like UN Deputy Undersecretary. Is this about Jimmy? It is. Frances Fisher, that's the actress's name. She was in Fargo season three and Titanic and lots of other stuff. Nothing. He's been with us since Tycho. A spy for our friend Fred Johnson. Hey, I take a fast enough. Shut up! Oh. Why would Fred spy on us? He knows more than we do. I've been stealing codes and tech from Tycho for two years now. Then why are you on our ship? Change of mission. <sighs> Dip my fingers a little too deep in Fred Johnson's cookie jar. I had to get off of Tycho before his OPA leg breakers scooped me up. Bullshit. When I saw you were headed for Eros, I hitched a ride. Too bad we're not going to Eros. You're not. And why the hell? There's nothing else out here. It's none of your damn business. It launched a boarding skiff on an intercept course. They must have picked up this arsehole's transmissions. They probably think we're smugglers, and now they're coming to check us out. Sake. Put them in the airlock. Well, wait a Fresh minute. Fresh air what? it is. Just wait a minute. We need to help each other out here, OK? Don't believe this, dick. You think the Martians are going to buy whatever story you're selling? Will you shut him up, please? No, look, you need to oh. talk some more. <laughs> You got a good right. You use it too much, but you got a good right. Enough. Detective Shuffle. Oh! I'm like some bad virus you just can't shake. When we first met, you told me that I was the patron saint of lost causes. You remember that? I do. I think I may have found another one. Yeah. I was thinking that when your goons were tossing me in the airlock. You were thinking about me then. Hmm. I'm honored. Usually when a man is about to lose everything, he realizes what mattered to him most. He sees it clearly for the first time. Maybe you haven't lost everything yet, huh? When you do, you'll know your way home. Oh. And it will welcome you. That was a threat, Miller. That was a threat. Printed books. We don't see these much anymore. Mm. Cervantes. Jimmy liked to think of himself as a knight. He thought it was a funny story. I never broke it to him that it was a tragedy. Can we stop with the bullshit now? Oh, I had a little left about <laughs> how charming your home is. <laughs> Should we sit down? Was he involved? Of course not. He would never. Oh, no, wait, I know this one. My boy was a little angel, and I thought we were done with the bullshit. <laughs> James Holden was conceived by a cult of political extremists as a trick for eight people to claim generational land rights. Kicked out of the Navy, he fell in with a radical fringe group in the belt because it reminded him of home. I can make shit up too. Why are you here? I need to understand your son. Dante, we are going to Hang need on. your flight plan. Pause. Sorry, we're going to come back. I know there's some drama happening, but I didn't want to skip over that scene because there's some important stuff in there about Holden's background. What were you going to call him in the end? Go with Jim. So he's raised by very retro, earthy parents. They've got books. They're living on the land. So why did they join the US Navy? The enemy. His principles seem pretty cool. It actually doesn't make sense that he would have gone and joined the Navy. Unless I guess the background angle from Ovasarala is that he never did want to join 
the Navy. Like he's a, he's the sleeper. Actually, he's entirely consistent with his family's principles, and he's essentially on mission. That would be really interesting. That would make sense why he sent out the communication because he would have the cover that look i panicked i was just trying to um keep my people safe which you guys know i've never bought as a rational excuse because there's so many other ways that they could have done that they could have just sent a, a communication saying we're being pulled in by a ship. if we disappear <laughs> you know where we were um Oh my god, that would be amazing. I would have been completely hoodwinked and I quite like it when that happens. But we're going to see, we're going to see. As I say, this is just me kind of thinking out loud, this is how I work. When I get some information, I sort of go, okay, let's try and follow that thread as, as far as we can follow it. Fight every battle, everywhere, always, in your mind. Everyone is your enemy, everyone is your friend. Every possible series of events is happening all at once. Hmm. The plot thickens. Oh, I did get some swears out of a Vassarala there. Thank you, Internet. Oh. Play. Rasinante, you have been flagged for inspection per MCR trade regulation A066. Do not deviate from your present course. If you do, you will be fired upon. <sighs> oh. I have dealt with these Mickey patrols before. I'm not gonna lie to you. Either way this plays out, you're dead. And I'm the one that's gonna bring you the good news. You're loose end. This boss that I used to work for in Baltimore, he called it the churn, when the rules of the game change. What game? The only game, survival. But the jungle tears itself down and builds itself into something new. Guys like you and me, we end up dead. It doesn't really mean anything. Or we happen to live through it, and, well, that doesn't mean anything either. <laughs> if survival is the game, I can help us survive. So you tell your captain, not our captain. You tell who's ever in charge. I'll see you soon. Yeah, thought so. Why? Why? Why would you put him somewhere where he could possibly do this? gonna be a lot of pauses this episode clearly i was thinking when he was upstairs talking to everyone like is he just dragging this conversation out to get more of them talking so that he's literally just gathering more intelligence oh anyway play oh wait he did go back to julie May's. This is not going to help you, sir. You've got to pull your shit together and get a plan. He's going to get himself arrested. That's not going to help Julie now. That gravity thing is amazing. So listen, that ship you're looking for, Anubis, whatever, it never showed up here. But the funny thing is, a short-range shuttle from that ship did. Anubis 1A is still here on Eros racking up dock fees. I didn't hear properly where it was, but go there. Is that for me? To take me to some windowless room so your interrogators can make me talk? Nobody wants to arrest you. Then why are you here? I have the facts about your son, but I don't understand him. I think you're full of shit, lady. <laughs> Jimmy is my son. 
He has all eight of us in him, but I carried him in my belly for nine months. He is mine. Wow. You have no idea what you're playing with here. Just arrest me. You put all your hopes on your son? I pressured mine to join the Marines, or I wouldn't pay for his education. First step in a career of public service. That's why he was in Callisto during the insurrection. That took his life. I've been wanting for someone to come around and tell me that it was all a terrible mistake. But my son is still alive. I'll be waiting on my deathbed for that news. So I have a pretty clear idea of what I'm playing with. <laughs> That's not something I usually lead with. <laughs> All right, Knuckle Driver, come to Daddy. Oh, come the fuck on! Here we go. Secure for prisoner. This is a game of pretend, and you guys are pretending to be the wrong thing. The Mickeys have been known to disguise their attached ships when they're doing covert ops. They use a special set of codes that tell other Martian ships that they are out there, they are doing the nasty, and to get lost. How do you know all this? I'm a good spy. Donkey balls. Did you just say donkey balls? Back when I was flying transport for the MCRN, we ran across this unflagged tanker acting kind of suspect in, in a pirate zone, so we prepared to engage. But when my captain hailed them, they just jabbered on and on, mm. ending with the phrase... Donkey balls. And? And, just like that, my captain ordered me to change my course. It should be in an operations locker or somewhere on this deck, somewhere right here. I'm nervous because that spy is very, very smart. Where did you get that key? From Lopez. Twenty-four digits. Donkey balls. Shit. Done with the hat. Wow, shit. I'm gonna take a trip. To where? Eros. You're gonna need someone to watch your back. A partner. Okay, better do this one alone. You were alone in that airlock. <sighs> Tommy. Okay, come with me. He grew up thinking he was alive because the land needed him. Hmm? That's a terrible thing to tell a child. Yeah. He stood at the gates to greet whatever goons the government sent to harass us. No offense. <laughs> None taken. We set him up to be a leader and then gave him a fight he could never win. The day before his 18th birthday, I took him out to mend a fence, and I told him to get as far away from this place as he could. And that if he didn't go, then I would, because I couldn't stand to watch what we were doing to him anymore. You were right to open the cage. I get a lovely message from him every month or two from some ship or other, deep out in the system. Jimmy still hasn't found his place, but at least he's free.
many Martians died getting us off the Donager? Ship that size, a few hundred. And now you're gearing up to kill a few more like it was nothing. Because they are the enemy right now. And we're the fugitives. And as far as they're concerned, we're the ones who blew up the Donager. And I am not spending the rest of my days in a Martian gulag. What the hell are you babbling about? I'm talking about that clown upstairs that as soon as you cut loose will sell us to the highest bidder. I'm talking about the Mickeys coming through that airlock to take us down. You logged the distress call, Holden. Welcome to the churn. Naomi was right to be afraid of you. Proximity oh. alarm, people. He's on about the churn this episode. Oh, shit. Can we please not take out another Martian ship? This seems unfair at this point. Done talking, Holden. We're about to have company. I will take you down before I let you take them down. Oh, shit. You got a clean shot, back of the head. Take it if you need it. Rasanante, release your outer airlock door now or we will breach. Hey there, boys. Just a couple of sec there, friendos. Donkey balls! Got it! <laughs> This is your final yeah, warning. Sorry. I'm sorry to be such a pain, boys, um, but uh, our power problems, they've been so... Uh... Ubiquitous and... mendacious and polyglottal. Like a couple of donkey balls. Received and understood, Rasanante. You get those comms checked out when you hit port. You got it, fellas. Oh, and uh, hey, you boys be careful out there, here. Yeah? You too, Rasanante. Safe <laughs> travels. Can you believe that? Damn, yeah, I'm good. Well, that worked out. Well done, y'all. Burton <laughs> doesn't give two shits. I don't see a terrorist mastermind. We'll have the asset bag him and bring him home for a long chat. Your corporate spy's been compromised. He's missed his last two comm windows. His final report said that Holden was heading for Eros in a converted MCRN gunship with fake transponder code supplied by Fred Johnson. So your analysis of his character notwithstanding, I've activated a black ops team. We're taking Holden off the board. Taking him off the board what? for a series of circumstances. He's done. Field trip's over. I need you back here. Fuck's sake! It was a wrong decision! Shit. Yeah. Don't worry. Next port we hit, I want your boy Amos off this ship. What's happened? Whatever leash you had him on, you better get him back on it. He's not my dog. Getting the show on the road? Look! Get him under control. You're the only one who can. Look, I know we got off to kind of a rocky start, but... Fuck off. Are you anything like that animal? You got top sign. Amos, you call him? No. Good. <sighs> then at least you can do me the respect of telling me that it's gonna happen. And mercy is not in the cards for me. So I can make my peace. Because I am not an animal. Either. I didn't trust you. See? That guy's pissing me off. I don't like a snitch. Ooh. Here's our man. 
So everyone is going to Eros. Wow. Bloody hell. Okay, so what this episode did is started to bring our groups, our separate groups together, and it's creating the conditions under which that can happen. We have Miller discovering that the Anubis is on Eros. We have the Fred Johnson mission, the Rosinante, heading to Eros, and because they have a spy on board that's communicating back, that's going to bring... The United Nations of Asarala or her people as we're moving into the final episodes of the season. So I'm guessing something pretty big is going to go down there at some point in the, in the next few episodes. You know, you all know now what I am wishing and longing to happen is that the witness, Lionel Blinsky or whatever it is, is actually Julie Mao. Um, Miller was wandering around Sarah's like a little lost lamb looked like he was wasted most of the time he seems like pretty much all he does is work he doesn't seem to have any friends or family or anyone to visit or kind of care about certainly doesn't seem like he has any hobbies other than potentially gambling what's he gonna do without his job so he's off to continue this mission on his own because after after a dis pretty disastrous confrontation with Anderson Dawes. He then breaks into Julie Mao's apartment, smashes stuff up. It's, you know, the place is bare, it's done, at least for now. He needs to take this case in another direction and then thankfully he gets that message from his contact that we saw him speaking to in the in previous episodes. And he's now got a fresh lead that he can just follow up on his own as, a, as, as an individual rather than working for Star Helix. So he's off to do that. He bids a sort of semi-emotional farewell to Octavia Mass. There's that reference to bad timing. So I still think something's, something's gone on with them in the past. I really, 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 really don't like the spy on the race in Ante. It's winding me up. Why would anyone speak to him for longer than two seconds? I feel like they're so smart. Someone on that ship should be like, He's already said he's a spy. They already know about the availability of implants. Why is no one checking out this guy's eye? But I don't know what everyone's knowledge is of that sort of stuff, so I don't know. But I'm finding that just because I just don't want... I don't want him fucking with our team. And he's fucking with our team. He's already realised there's a little bit of a cultural difference, potential clash between... Holden's style, which is quite idealistic and, and rules-based. He has a very black and white version of morality. Um, other people, I would say probably like Alex and Naomi, have a relative morality. So they do have a moral code, but it is... You adjust it according to the, the context that you're in. I'm not entirely sure Amos has a moral code. I think he has already explained to us that... His moral code is Naomi. He can he doesn't have any sort of filter, so he's just looking at survival. And will you know if someone's an ally in that survival, great. 
if and when there comes a time when they are not an ally in his survival, he would attack them like he would any other enemy and he wouldn't have some sort of moral quandary about, but they were my friend five minutes ago. I'd be interested to see how that applies to Naomi because he does seem to have a quite different relationship with her than he has with other people. I'm sure that will get tested at some point because he was visibly shocked and hurt when he realised that she hadn't told him about Jim um, sending the, you know, responding to the distress signal because she was scared of what he would do. He was hurt. So he has feelings, certainly in relation to her at least. This guy is still sending data. At the moment it looks like he doesn't have any signal to send, but he's taken a lot of footage. And he's got Burton on there looking like a proper psychopath, which he may well be. He's taking information about the ship. He's trying to, he's clearly probing people to figure out what their personality type is, how they're likely to respond to things, where the tension is in the team so that he can start twisting the screws. He's very good at what, what he does. Very interesting seeing the how Vassarala deal with Jim's mum because it she clearly came out of that house barely convinced that Jim is a good egg in all of this. I was trying to work out what her facial expression meant when um Francis Fisher, but Jim's mum said he sends a warm message home every month or two, you know, from some ship wherever he is. And Avasarala did one of her Avasarala faces where she's like, <gasps> from some ship or other deep out in the system. And I don't know if she had an idea or what, but something passed over her face in that moment. And I mean, it could just be, you know, the way that she came out. It could just be that she thought, wow, he, okay, he's the kind of guy that sends his mum messages from space. Or it could have been something else. Uh, in the moment, I thought, oh my God, she's going to she's gonna put her under surveillance so she can get that. You know, at some point, he's going to want to talk to his mother. So we need to look out, find a way to get intercept that transmission. So that would be my guess. If it meant anything at all, I think it meant that. Aaron Wright is on his last nerve. Everything's escalating. It looks like we're at the point where politicians get to, where they're like, we've got to do something because everyone's going fucking insane. So I'm guessing that's their mission is now to go to Eris, grab them and attempt to get information from them when they get back. But then that was kind of what Avasarala was saying. So I feel like Aaron Wright's thing was a bit more permanent. Like, you know, we're going to kill him. <sighs> Which I just think would be a disaster. That is a really stupid thing to do. Because they haven't got a clue what's going on yet. But I get Mars is probably like, we are fucking had it. One more shit, Earth. You know, one more ship and we're going into series. We're going to take on the OPA. I mean, that that stuff would have to be happening behind the scenes because you can't just keep taking Martian ships at the sky and there's going to be no consequences. And I guess at a certain part, point, Mars is going to say, look, you know, you are being so unhelpful with this. We're starting to wonder if it's not the OPA and it might just be you. So I get that these people are going to have to start making really unpalatable decisions now and, and inside of that the truth of what's happening is going to become less and less relevant because they're thinking geopolitically not in terms of justice not in terms of truth not in terms of even morality they are thinking in terms of geopolitics and that is where stuff starts going on the fritz so I really enjoyed this episode. I, I do like the episodes where we get like a pivot. And this episode felt like a pivot, like the start of like the sort of third, fourth act of this season. And I'm, I'm in. I'm really, really keen to, you know, bring everyone together and see what happens. 
lovely episode well well delivered and i can't wait until the next one until the next time bye bye